Hey team, Josh Wagner here. Today I'm gonna to share with you one absolutely significant headspace mindset shift to transform your retention and you can do it immediately. You don't need to go uh, create or set up some type of uh, ad campaign. So this is one of the foundational principles of patient mastery. That's where we help amazing chiropractors. And when I say amazing chiropractor, it doesn't mean you have a million dollar practice or it means you truly care about chiropractic, you truly care about your patients, and you deserve to have a great lifestyle. That's an amazing chiropractor. So we help you be seen as the go-to chiropractor in your community, in your office, and of course, you yourself in your head. Get your collections to a level where you just don't have to worry anymore in less time, like three-day weekends, loving, <clears throat> sorry, loving practice and less stress. That's the patient mastery proven process. Um, it's worth it. It's amazing. And there's a community of coaches and docs all around the world who are just there to support you, make it happen. So here's what happens. Here's the story to illustrate it. I, oh, hey Andy, hey Al. I started doing yoga in grad school. Uh, I went to Life University and there was a gym on campus and some of the students were certified yoga instructors and they would uh, teach. Like every day there's a yoga class and I, I like to work out so I saw them and I was like, yeah, I'll start doing this. And I just realized, hey, this was like, it felt good, it was mentally, uh, health-wise. I remember I would do affirmations during yoga and I, and I thought, well, when I'm in these yoga positions and I'm talking to myself, like healthy talk, I noticed it would stay with me after the session. And look, that was my experience with yoga. I really liked it. Um, just like chiropractic, everyone uses chiropractic or yoga for different reasons. Everyone has a different mindset around it. And for me, yoga is like, eh, it was great for my muscles, my body, relaxation, peace of mind. I really enjoyed it. And I did it for a couple, my last two years, multiple times a week at life. Then I ended up going and setting up practice in Manhattan in New York City. And both because yoga was valuable and it was a good way to connect with my community and yoga instructors could be phenomenal patient advocates or referral advocates. So I started doing different yoga classes in my neighborhood uh, because probably like where you are, there's many different yoga instructors in different yoga places. And I started to notice something. The yoga instructors were all probably much better yoga instructors in Manhattan than the grad students at Life and all the positions and poses and classes, they were all good, but there was something different and new about the ones in Manhattan. And I noticed that also when I, tra when I, when I was traveling and would go to yoga places in other cities or areas. The yoga ins instructors oftentimes to begin the class, end the class, and even throughout the class, in between all the postural and positioning instruction, would oftentimes be sprouting and promoting and pushing a certain life or health philosophy. Maybe it was how to eat. Maybe it was how to think. Maybe it was you know, philosophy, spirituality, probably not religion. But there was definitely a teaching and pushing ideology aspect completely outside of pure yoga and the poses and positions. Hey George, nice to see you. And here's the interesting thing. I wasn't against anything they were saying. You're probably hearing it as like, oh, Josh isn't a, is against, you know, they were promoting vegetarianism or veganism. And no, I actually agreed with everything they were saying. So catch that. This is very important. I agreed with everything they were saying, but I was going for something that was really important to me the physical stretch and movement and the peace of mind in my mind when I was doing it. What I was getting was that, and the peace of mind was kindly ruined because I was getting pushed on verbally and thought wise. Now I want you to think how this relates to the stereotypical chiropractic experience of a new patient, especially if you are a, let's just be honest, a scripted robot of the stereotypical traditional practice management method, which is the new patient's not gonna feel heard in their consult and they're gonna hear all about chiropractic subluxation, the spine. They're gonna have to come to a 45 minute or hour long lay lecture with their spouse at night one time to learn about chiropractic. 
And then they're gonna have to come to a report of findings, most likely with their spouse, that's gonna be 45 minutes, and whether or not there's fear tactics and scare care, 99% of it, they won't remember three minutes when they leave. Yet this person wants to get better, wants to feel better, wants to be healthier, wants to get their stuff fixed. And you're gonna give that to them, but you're also, that's this, you're also doing all of this. And we wonder as a profession, why we have such low referrals, why we have such low compliance, respect, overall retention, is because patients want one thing and we're coming in and we're wanting something else for them, even though it's right, it's healthy, and deep down, they want this too, but they can't hear it when they're over here as a new patient, stressed, in pain, anxious, nervous, all of that. And that's one of the main reasons chiropractors end up banging their head against the wall in practice, feel like they're not good enough, have this turnstile of, I've still got to get 30 to 40 new patients every month, even though I've been in practice 10 years, 15 years, to replace all the ones who are disappearing, dropping out, or looking at new patients on the books and, and, and having this dreaded feeling of, oh, I've got to convince this person, or I've got to sell this person or close this person and like that heavy feeling rather than awesome. I'm gonna transform this person's life and I'm gonna open them up to the possibility of what chiropractic can do for them, whether it's in the short term or the rest of their life. So I wanna think about how does this apply in your practice? How much are you speaking to the patient that they really can't hear? Maybe you don't, you don't realize they can't hear it, but they can't. They're not ready for it. They're not interested in it rather than catering to exactly what they want, which is like, do you know how I feel? Do you know what I want? Can you help me? Not the, um, oh God, the awful four old school practice management, like how much does it cost? How long will it take? Like, no, they don't care about any of that. That's just the, the number on the piece of paper and they say, okay, let's get started. Patient mastery, you've got to show patients that you've heard them, you know how they feel, you know what they want. Not just, oh, I never wanna see you again in two visits and heal my disc issue of six years. That's the superficial want. Like, you know what they really want. Getting back to their life and what that means. And here's the kicker. Here's the difference between you and the yoga instructor who loses me and many other people like me. Here's the fourth one. That you want for them what they want too. And when you can nail those four You've got patients who are gonna talk about you before they get results. When they see whatever rates you choose for helping them get back to their life, they say, all right, got it, can we start today? Not, uh, uh, you know, negotiating or let, let me get back to you after uh, July 4th. Um, you know, we're going on vacation. Uh, I gotta speak to my spouse, like, no. Because they just realized they just met the most unique healthcare provider and doctor they've ever been to. And they're so excited to tell their spouse and get started. That's patient mastery. Um, if you want, I have a master class that has the way to start every single new patient consult. The first few sentences to position you as the go-to chiropractor. If you want that, type in um, me, M-E, in the comments and I will message you and send you that video. And just realize, most of what you've been taught in chiropractic, whether it's in school, the last 17 coaches you've had, the people on the state association, it is a different world. If, unless you're in network and you're happy with that and everything that you have to do because of it, like if you wanna be out of network, cash, really, really love what you get paid and have the freedom to do what you want, it's a different world than stereotypical, traditional chiropractic management. And you're, when you're ready to step into that and have three-day weekends every week, not have to sell tens units or um, fear and scare people into care or recommend anything you don't believe in, like you can actually recommend what you believe in, get paid what you want, have the lifestyle you deserve, and have three-day weekends and love practice, it is possible. Why? Because I've seen hundreds and hundreds of docs go through patient mastery and do it, and we'll help you do that too.
But if you want the, just the initial part of how to start every single consult to be seen, trusted, respected as the go-to chiropractor, comment me below and I will send you that video. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all the people you take care of. Everything I do is so you can help more people, more people get helped by chiropractic, and the perception and value of chiropractic and chiropractors raise. Thank you for all you do. I will see you next week.